Hey there, Adam Savage here in my cave. Hi, everybody. Um, microns, that's what we're talking about today. There are so many great videos on YouTube about the history of measurement and the origins of precision. I have contributed some to this content stream. Uh, a couple Thanksgivings ago, I came in here and talked about gauge blocks and how there's no such thing as a measurement. Uh, and uh, there's a link to that video in the description. But um, I, it's funny, I, I always like to have a narrative arc. I think in terms of narrative arcs, I, I think of episodes of this channel, just like I did like Mythbusters, I actually think of it like a joke. I think of it uh, that there's a punchline. And as long as I know that punchline can land, as long as I know what the punchline is, I can kind of get there. This video is a little different because uh, the punchline is, I'm just gonna try and give you some scale. Because I just purchased a new measuring device. We have lots of measuring devices here, right? It starts, it starts, it starts with something like this, this beautiful old wooden ruler made of brass and wood. These are all materials that expand and contract, but you know, for your basic carpentry, building houses and buildings, this is totally sufficient. Uh, then when you get better, you get machinist rules with finer and finer increments. When you go past that machinist rules, then you're going towards dial calipers or digical, digital calipers. Um, oh, I went and got a set. By the way, I'm here to tell you that the brown and sharp 599-579-4, these are without a doubt my favorite calipers. They are, they ought to say, bulletproof on them. Instead, what they say is shockproof, which is not incorrect. I'm hard on my equipment and these things hold up to it. Um, anyway, uh, right, I was talking about measurement. So within a division, like here, we've got this ruler drops things down to, I don't have to show it to you, we can do this in B-roll. Um, this ruler drops things down to a 64th of an inch. And a 64th of an inch is about 15 thousandths. Yeah, give or take. 16? Um, about a third of a millimeter. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, metric friends. <laughs> a 64th of an inch is one third of a millimeter. Am I right about that? Hold on, I'm just gonna double check that. Yeah, right, because 32nd, a 16th is 625, which means 32nd is 3125, which means that a uh, 64th is half of that, which is about 15 thou, 15 and a half thou, give or take. Um, yeah, third of a millimeter. Millimeters forty mil forty thousandths. Anyway, so I'm I'm bringing it down. I'm bringing the I'm I'm bringing the. My whole goal here is just to give you the pleasure I have at being able to parse the tiniest of increments. And parse just means to understand, just to kind of hold them in my brain in some kind of orientation. So. Sub the 64th divisions of a steel rule like this. And to be clear, uh, a 64th is not just a third of a millimeter. It's like four thicknesses of your hair, depending on, depending on where we got it from, your eyebrow, your hair, the downy fur of your forearm. Uh, those are, those hairs all have different widths, but in general, your hair hair is like three to four thou in diameter. So now we have some, now we have some reference. You know how thick your hair is. You have an experience of that. You can feel it between your fingers. That's also about the thickness of a piece of paper. Uh, your regular copy paper is three and a half to four and a half thou, depending. Um, and... 
one thousandth, let's just get to the decimals, is 0 0.001. 0 0.001. Two zeros and a one. That is one thousandth of an inch. And I have my 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 calipers here are actually. I can do all this in B-roll. I don't know why I keep holding this up. Uh, these are rated to 1,000. That means that really what it means is that every division, uh, measuring equipment is not rated past the divisions it has in it. So in this, every single little black mark is 1,000th of an inch. That's what the, that's what the, uh, Tolerance tells you and the tolerance is like two arrows with some lines and then it says Here's what here's what this can measure reliably and so I have a I have a metric one this one Measures to 0.01 millimeter a tenth of a millimeter four thou Oh, could it be that a metric caliper is slightly less um, granular than a uh SAE? I'm not gonna get into it. But I have lots of um I have lots and lots of measuring devices here. A thousandth is in my shop about the highest resolution I'm gonna worry about. I mean, it's not like I'm always going to achieve one thousandth of an inch in terms of my precision, but like yeah. Uh, when I have to get to something, when I need a certain kind of mechanical fit, uh, I'm not good enough yet that I can kind of finesse below the, 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 the what do you call it, resolution of one thousandth of an inch. Beyond that, we're, we're, we're in much more, what do you, it's scary territory because like, Every movement you make matters. Um, so, uh, but this is all about having purchased a new piece of equipment. So uh, let's let's start at the beginning because I want to give a little bit of a primer here. So the industrial revolution is, is uh, what Wikipedia says to me is that it's generally considered between the mid 18th and mid 19th century, the 1760s to the 1840s, which is amazing in this we built things like the cotton gin, we built steam engines, we built all sorts of incredibly precise equipment. And at that point, governments around the world were working to establish measurement standards. Uh, I recently held the standard yard from the mid 19th century that the Royal Society has in its collection in London. That is a state attempting to help its manufacturing base by establishing something that everyone can agree upon. Um, so the Industrial Revolution is happening. And by, eight, by the 1890s, there's still this issue, this incredible issue that across states, across, across countries, and then even ac across uh, smaller distances, shops had difficulty agreeing uh, on what an inch was, on what specific measurements were. And it really was specifically because like there's only one yard in a vault in France or in Washington or in London. So how do you achieve what a metrologist would call traceability? And that means that let's say the government has a reference standard of four inches. This is a four inch ceramic gauge block. It is four inches, hold on. This has been calibrated to be four inches plus or minus, hold on, seven nanometers. Plus or minus seven nanometers at 68 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 Celsius. So the government has this thing. They tell you, we've got the standard, but how do you use that standard? Well, what you do is you make something that is four inches as exactly as you can. You bring it, you trace it, you actually compare the two. And then you know that your standard has been traced to the original. And you can say your standard is plus or minus X to the official standard. 
But does that mean that every single shop has to send someone to where the standard is? It kind of does, from what I understand. This is all coming around to Carl Edward Johansson, who is this genius Swede. Uh, he is an engineer and he invents this thing called gauge blocks. Again, I covered these in great detail back uh, Thanksgiving a couple of years back, link in the description. But what Carl did was he invented a system whereby um, a set of super precise blocks are made that are traced to the original. So he's taken care of the traceability part. He has gone to the source he has measured it to everyone's satisfaction, and then he manufactured a set of precise blocks. These start at 50 thousandths, they go up to uh, 4,000 thousandths. Uh, and with the arrangement of these blocks, you can create almost any measurement you want between um, about 100 thou, just under an eighth of an inch, and all the way up to well, I mean, technically, I think if you assemble all the gauge blocks, they're like 20 plus inches long. That would be crazy to do. But at any rate, let's say you needed 2.715 as a, as, a, as, a, as a measurement, you would assemble the blocks needed to create that measurement and then compare yours to it. And the best part is, is that when you buy these gauge blocks, you know that Carl's company has traced them to the original back at the source. So that's what, um, that's within metrology, uh, that is what is the term traceability means uh, the, the, uh, the lineage to the original, the lineage to the standard. Okay, so Carl builds these things. They cost a fortune. They are being, they are being, they are, they are so flat. These objects are so flat. I did this math uh, in January. If, if, ah, yeah, these blocks are so flat, this face here is so surpassingly flat that if you expanded this out to the length of Manhattan, about 22 miles long, the total variance across the plane would be like an inch or two. That's how, that's how flat these blocks are. Um, they are produced through a process called lapping, which is to be using flat things and tiny grits that make toothpaste feel like sandpaper that slowly take off material until it is incredibly, ludicrously, unimaginably flat. And as you could imagine, in the very beginning, this cost a fortune. Um, so the first gauge block sets were in the like $20,000 adjusted dollars range. Um, now you can buy a set like $180 for a set of grade B, grade B, <laughs> grade B gauge blocks. Um, now Carl had trouble with this business apparently and went to Henry Ford who bought Johansson's company, and one can still buy Johansson gauge blocks because the Ford Motor Company produced them with Carl. They, they made tons and tons of sets, but even more than that, Carl ended up by his choice. See, when he was doing this, there was still some fudginess between meters and inches was an inch exactly 20, 25.4 millimeters? Or was it 29.40006, what, some number? There were different standards and Carl chose one. And that's the one we have today. Uh, that's remarkable. Anyway, uh, because I love collecting things, that are part of the history of the subject that I'm interested in, I found out that Johansson didn't just make gauge blocks, they also made gauges. And I found this on eBay last week for just over a hundred bucks, 150 bucks. This is a, oh, this is a Johansson gauge. Micro Now, 
This one with a resolution of 0 0.001. This one, 0 0 0.00005. So to be clear, hold on a second, I'm gonna try and get, let's try this. Yes, yes, there we go. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, so, there's your zero point between here and here. That distance, which is actually... Nope, I used the metric one. which is actually just under an inch, is in fact the measurement for one thousandth of an inch. So this measures, this device measures a total of four thousandths of an inch. Two on this side of zero, two on that side of zero. Four thou. So this gauge has uh, 20, 80, 80 lines that all fall within the width of a human hair. Uh, for the for the math nerds out there, aren't the math nerds the only ones remaining at this point? Um, 0. 0.00005 is one half of a ten thousandth of an inch, or give or take one or two microns. A micron is a thousandth of a millimeter. Think of a millimeter, divide it into a thousand. That is roughly what each divisor on this gauge measures. It's, 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 that's pretty amazing. Um, it thrills me. It thrills me. It thrills me to be able to, to, Look, like I said, I don't need much more than this to do almost everything that I do. But I just look at this, the CEJ, Carl Edward Johansson. He deserves to be celebrated. He should be, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous that a POS like Henry Ford is constantly talked about where nobody knows the name of Carl Edward Johansson. Way more important, in my opinion. Um, right. So while I was like grooving on having obtained this beautiful piece of kit, I was, I started thinking about my gauge blocks and I thought, okay, well, if I can bring if I can, if I can, within the course of this video, get you to think in increments like half a ten thousandth of an inch, if we can, if we can get there in scale, human hair is four thousandths of an inch. This measures about a quarter of that. This entire thing <laughs> measures to one eightieth of that, to just over one micron, a thousandth of a millimeter. Okay, now that we're there, let's talk about gauge blocks again, because the magical property of gauge blocks is you can stack them, and because you can stack because they're so flat, when you stack them, you get traceable measurements. But you don't just place them like this. Oh no, 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 no. You do what's called ringing. So you make sure there's no dust. You join them under a little bit of pressure at about 90 degrees, and they just they just stick is what happens. Um, and you do the same again and they stick and you can do the same again and they stick. Oh, what oh, I did not hit the block. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I'm playing it fast and loose. This is the garbage set. This is not the garbage set, but this is the shop set of gauge blocks. So here we go. What? What? That felt like something funky there. Oh my God, 
there's machinists like banging their heads against the wall watching this. Here you go. That's it. Wow. Carl made it look so easy. I had footage. I have, I've seen YouTube videos of Carl Edward Johansson lining up like 10 of these. <laughs> suffice to say, suffice to say, The thing about gauge blocks is when you ring them together, ring, W-R-I-N-G, the distance between these two blocks is reliably 25 nanometers. Now, how do I give you scale on 25 nanometers? 25 nanometers is um, about the distance your fingernail grows in about 30 seconds. Uh, there is a genius online, this is from years ago, I'm not even sure I could find it again, of a guy who read that your fingernails grow one nanometer per second, and he actually um, came up with a measuring protocol for his fingernails and let them grow and actually determined, yes, give or take, they actually do grow about a nanometer per second, which means they grow about a meter every 27 years which actually follows when you think about people with those super long fingernails that are like 35, 36 inches long. Okay, I know I'm grossing you out, but um, the plus or minus, the plus or minus X number of nanometers. What the hell is a nanometer? Well, a nanometer is one thousandth of a micron. So we got to that this measurement device measures a micron and that the tolerance of these gauge blocks is measured in increments that are one thousandth of what this can measure. Uh, and then just to finish this off, I wanted to talk to you about what these measurement um, tolerances are. This is the B grade shop block. And so the, the as you can see here on the list, the, the plus or minus nanometers is, you know, some of these are plus three, plus four, minus seven, plus 18, minus four. These are, I mean, that's a lot of nanometers, but nanometers are incredibly small. So if that's a B grade, what is a grade zero from Midutoyo? What sort of tolerances are those? Oh, wow. All of those tolerances are almost all below one nanometer or hovering thereabouts, uh, 0.4, 2.4, 1.2. So, the precision of these is like almost 10x, uh, maybe more like 5x what these are. Um, and my whole goal here was just to kind of bring the scale to bear in the, in the clarity about this, uh, about these measurements, because I get an endorphin rush when I feel like I understand them. And I want you to have that endorphin rush because it's really pleasurable. I have a picture of myself on my grandfather's lap, Joe Savage, on a porch in West Virginia in 1967, late 67. So I am, I am less than a year old. And my grandpa Joe who was born in 1895 is 73, 72 years old. I have another picture of Joe on his grandfather's lap. I think it's on the same porch. And he is one years old, so it's 1896. And his grandfather was born in like 1829. So right there, in those two photographs, I feel like I can see back to almost the dawning of our country, to the early 19th century. 
that's scale to me. That That is a fascinating kind of exploration of human scale, of just how close things are. My, my father knew people who had formerly been enslaved. That's, that's how we think of that as the distant past. It's not the distant past. It's right around the corner there. And those kind of scale, those things that help put our culture and our world and uh, our populations into perspective, also, I, it's all part of the same excursion to me. I, I recently came to the understanding that al almost all science communication is simply about commuting, communicating scale in a way that creates drama. And that's all I'm trying to do. Uh, so I'm aware. I'm aware that I haven't really had a point to this video, <clears throat> give or take. Uh, I just wanted to share this new, I guess this is a show and tell and an unboxing. Um, but it, yeah, I'm pleased to share this with you and to share with you why I find objects like this so fascinating and so compelling. Thanks guys for joining me. Um, gonna shoot some close up gloriful, glorious, gloriful, glorious B-roll of many of these measuring instruments and I will see you guys next time, cheers. I know what you're asking. You're asking, Adam, how would such a thing like this be used in an average shop? And I'm going to show you. Uh, so you would <clears throat> you would remove this carefully from its lovely box, and you would place it in a stand like this. There are other kinds of stands. This is one of them. Uh, and then you would use your best set of gauge blocks to set the comparator. So in a, in a good shop, there would be a, um, a set of gauge blocks only ever used. Well, first, in a real shop, you'd have one set of gauge blocks just for calibrating the other gauge blocks. And then you would take one of those. And this is a ceramic. Uh, okay, let's see here. I'm gonna, uh... Okay, so here's your gauge block on the stand. And as you can see, you can see the dial there. Hold on, I'm gonna zoom in on it. You can see the dial there is moving. Oh my God, it's so sensitive. And I'm just gonna try and adjust it so it's at zero. There we go. Oh, almost. All right, so that's at zero. Let's zoom back out. And when I move the block, the zero doesn't change. Oh, nor should it. <laughs> nor should it. Hold on. Oh, you can't even see it. Okay, that, that zero shouldn't move and it doesn't. So now I have my comparator. And then I would take the thing that I had just machined, let's say it's this block here. Let's say it's this block. And I wanna make sure that the thing I've machined is as accurate as possible. I'd bring it under the same gauge. And right there, huh. You can see that it is about three quarters of a division up above. What? And as I move it, it's pretty consistent. That's, um, so you might get a measurement from your client that says you want this to be plus or minus one thousandth of an inch. That means that every measurement could be wrong by being above, up to above 1,000th in its measurement or below 1,000th of its measurement. But on this gauge, that means that a 1,000th of an inch tolerance means that this dial can be anywhere between these two ones and you'd still be in tolerance. If you ask for a tolerance of plus or minus a 10,000th, well then 
it would be you would be trying to make sure that your tolerance fell between the these marks and the zero. That's a ten thousandth of an inch. Right there is half of that's a that's a half of a ten thousandth, and that right there is a quarter of a ten thousandth. So a half a ten thousandth is about one point two microns. This is here right now reading less than a micron. Now, do you notice that this is going down here? Do you notice that that's going down? Oh my God, this is so cool. Take a look, take a look. When I first put it there, I think we agree it was right there at that mark, at that mark, and now it's below. The reason that I think it's below, that it's falling is, ow, <laughs> I just bumped my elbow. Um, it's from my body heat. Is that possible? Sorry, it kind of feels like it's moving and I want to show you something that I, that I, that is I, kind of crazy. All right, so there it is. We've established that that's a thousandth. That's one thousandth. That is zero. Each of the big divisions is a ten thousandth. Each of the smaller ones is a half of a ten thousandth. And that is sitting ever, 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 ever so slightly above zero. But watch this. I'm going to take this block out and I'm going to hold it in my hand. For, I don't know, 10 seconds. Okay, about 12 seconds. Now, I've imparted some body heat to this. Let's see what it does to the measurement. It's measurable. My body heat imparted an expansion in the metal that is visible here. And now that I'm no longer touching it, I think you can see that the needle is falling. It's moving. It's moving that way. I'm just gonna keep recording because it's so freaking cool. Look at that. That's definitely moving. You can see it. I'm not touching it. The block is still under there. But it really, yeah, now you can see the line clearly. Dude, that's insane. Look, I, I always knew, I, I was always really clear that steel and other things expand when they get hotter. I just didn't know I had any measuring equipment that was sensitive, en sensitive enough to show it on something as small as a single inch. I feel like this could be a fever dream. I'm not sure that I'm right about what's happening here. This may all be within the, 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 what do you call it? The, 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 a sensitivity bubble that like, there's all sorts of other factors that could be contributing to this, but it's been sitting there. Hold on. Still moving. Still moving, still reducing. And so again, just to reiterate, I think it's really clear now that we've watched the measurement change while I was touching the steel gauge block. But that's the reason that these, that these measurements are all calibrated at exactly 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. That's freaking cool. Years and years and years ago, I read that the main cables of the Golden Gate Bridge are like 15 feet longer in the middle of the day than they are in the middle of the night, which kind of tracks over five and a half, six thousand 6,000 feet of length. But be, to be able to see the, 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 the heat expansion and contraction, that tells you that in, in places that require super high precision, like <coughs> think about the LIGO, the laser interferometry gravitational wave detector. Uh, this thing is a measuring device that makes this look like you're measuring with sledgehammers and like heavy metal music. Like 
the LIGO is measuring things at a, a level of precision that, that, that dwarf this. The James Webb Space Telescope, who, who, whose each mirror is precise to within like less than a wavelength of light. There's another video for explaining that scale. Um, it's totally amazing. This, this stuff is endlessly fascinating to me. Thanks for joining me for this this walk and talk. Appreciate it. <laughs> See you next time.